All right. Huh. <laughs> Having a drinking problem. <laughs> All right. Let's make more friends. You walk with a purpose. You don't really have a purpose, aside from friendship, of course. But you know these streets pretty well by this point, so you can at least strut like you've got one. All right. Munchy. <laughs> hey, now that you've gone and thought about the concept of purpose, you might as well make one up for yourself. You turn your walk toward the book hive. A handful of your friends hang out in there, and there are a few rooms that are generally pretty danger-free, so why not? It's a little difficult to make yourself walk past the spookier rooms, but you manage to avoid the siren song of the brain room once more. Your destination tonight is the room you usually watch your teal friends do homework in. It's understandable, after your office experience with Tirona, why this is their neutral meeting ground. Unfortunately, a casual stroll through the stacks uncovers no friends at all. Damn. You consider trying out a higher stakes locale when, wait, you see a shoe picking out from one of the bigger hexagonal book hole things. Shelves? It really doesn't maximize space to have shelves shaped like that. Whatever, if you get caught up in trying to make paltry shit like troll bookshelves make sense, you'll drive yourself to madness before you can figure out if this shoe belongs to someone you know. You walk toward it, and the shoe is revealed to be on the strut pod of a troll whose head is barely picking out over a book, and nope, a jade, but not one of your friends. Whoever it is curls up smaller in the hexagon, burying her face deeper into scribble journal of a cullable wiggler. <laughs> it's not the most inviting posture, to be sure. The polite thing to do would be to keep moving, probably, but you feel a little off about that. You gently nudge your foot into hers where it still peeks out of the shelf and ask if she's okay. It'll clear your conscience, if nothing else. The book lowers. I'm great. Just going on a journey of the imagination through some classic literature. Nothing to see here. Oh man, it's another kid. You know young trolls have to handle themselves as much as older ones, but as well acquainted as you are with the facade of pretending you're exactly where you're supposed to be, you get the feeling she's not exactly telling the truth. So you're equipped to help. Plus, it's not like you haven't been befriended a few tweens... Plus, it's not like you haven't befriended a few tween sweep equivalents here in Alternia already. You successfully didn't get murdered by Amnesia, and you did a passable job befriending Tirona and Carico. Though, sometimes you wake up shaking. The remnants of dreams where you failed them on loop in your brain where they... You shake that horror from your mind and try to look as non-threatening as possible. Not that it's particularly hard for you, and you, as you speak. <laughs> uh, let's ask... about Bronya. Uh, did she come here with someone? Bronya, maybe? You know Jade's her age aren't really supposed to be out and about outside the caverns. Ah, oh, I see. You're a snitch. Why aren't she out? <laughs> With that, she tucks her legs up against her and rolls out of the shelf with the agility only youth can manage and takes off between the stacks. You chase after her, but wherever her next hiding spot is must be even better. Eventually, you give up. Youth roll! <laughs> that's how that's supposed to work. I think that made more sense. All right. <laughs> She's in the brain room. You still get the feeling she might need some help, so you ease into it. Maybe she'll open up a bit as you talk. You tell her this book hive has a huge gallery full of brains and jars, if she wants to go check it out. Oh, what's a brain? I want to see. She's 
She unfolds herself from her hiding spot, brushing invisible dust off her skirt as she stands up. She rocks back on her heels and cocks her head, her locks bouncing against her shoulder. I'm Wanchi. Also, I know who you are, if you were wondering. I wouldn't go wandering off with anyone, quest for brains or not. Maybe only five and a half sweeps, but I'm not stupid. Ooh. She seems less afraid, but she's still got a nervous edge to her voice, so you try to be a force of calm. A real motherfucking blade plug-in of zen, stinking up the place with your chill vibes. You walk together toward the atrium, making small talk on the way. You apologize if you made it seem like she didn't look like she belonged here. Uh, you're just not used to seeing young jades outside the caverns. She side-eyes you like she's weighing the implications of what you just said. Okay, I see there's no use trying to fool you. I may have done a small jailbreak. Oh. Do they not have enough books in the caverns or something? She brushes you off in favor of her own question. Of course we have books. You didn't answer me before. What's a brain? Oh, right. You round the curve of the room and point in the window. Think pads. <sighs> on her tiptoes, she peeks into the bottom of the window. I've never seen one up close before. She tries the door handle, but it's still as locked as it always was. She looks at you expectantly. Well, can we go in or what? A surly-eyed guard starts not so subtly watching you, drumming her fingers on the handle of her mace. Ah, Globes. You were trying so hard to be cool and approachable that you fucked up and forgot this room was off limits. Picking a kid to break and enter is... Well, it's pretty much par for the course, actually, but it's not what you meant to be doing. Uh, nah, you saw it. Looking only. And now you're done. Great, time to move along. Ah, eh, lame. Wanchi doesn't pick up on the danger behind her, even with your hurried speech. You change the subject to why she broke out of the caverns, if not for more books, and start walking, hoping she'll follow you. She doesn't. Oh, I was trying to beast get to Beast Con. It's a convention for all kinds of cool stuff, but I want to go for the Soldier Per Beast meetup. My fan fiction is pretty popular. I have a lot of fans going, and I thought maybe I could make friends with some of them. But I don't know where anything is out here, so I got lost. She takes a breath and a step, finally, but then stops and clasps her hands together. Oh! The guard starts walking. You eyeball the exits, all the way down the curved staircase. You could make it, but you can't just leave her here to take the fall. Once she keeps talking, oblivious. When you was always complaining about how you're everyone's best friend and how you know so much. Do you know where the con is, huh? We could go together. The guard gets closer. You gotta make a decision, and fast. <laughs> take her or pretend to take her? Let's pretend. You've heard of the con she's talking about. You were thinking of going with Tengri and Polypa anyway, but the list of activities seemed a little too dangerous, honestly. These past few months, you've been up to your ass in close calls, and you'd quite frankly like to cut back on them, including, you know, the one your ass is currently embroiled in. You make some non-committal noises as you work out how to tell her. Once she crosses her arms and leans back against the brain room door, which the guard really does not like if her increased speed and mace brandishment is any indication. Okay, okay. Yeah, you say. Let's go right now. Your hype is contagious, even though you're completely faking it. She claps and bounds behind you down the stairs. A quick tug at her wrist pulls her out of the mace's trajectory as the guard chucks it at you from above. It thuds mightily against the wall by the door, and you both make it outside unbloodied. Checking behind you to confirm you're not being followed, you don't stop running till you're both safely around the corner. Once she giggles through catching her breath. Ah, oh, that was a close one. Librarians, am I right? She grins and takes your hands. Do you believe we only just met and already we're having bonding hijinks? I didn't think making a friend would be so simple. I can't wait to hang out even more at the con. Ah, oh, her smile is a knife in your pusher. She's so excited about your budding friendship, and here you are, gutlessly hiding the fact that you have no intention of taking her from one dangerous situation to the other. Maybe you would have agreed if you were in a braver mood, but you just don't know if you're up for more life or death babysitting adventures right now. What you should do, probably, is get her home. You don't tell her any of this, of course. Instead, you agree and then check Gorgle Maps. 
The Khan is down the road to the left, the caverns are to the right. Leading her straight back home would be too obvious, so you take a meandering route. Everything you pass seems to impress her. The frankly bonkers range of architecture styles, the shivery carnivorous plants, the burned out wreckage of someone's hive, and the flickering starlight all around. She's observing a worm crossing the sidewalk. Not here exposed, all squishy and brave, huh? When you work out a cool when you point out a cool rock, eager to keep her wonderment going. Really? She puts her hand on her cocked hip. You think we don't have rocks in the caverns? Try harder. She rolls her eyes at you, but she's still grinning. You accept the challenge and tell her there's something she's definitely never seen up ahead. Bring it. You lead the way. It's been a hot minute since you've been back over here. You're interested to see it again. Still, this side jaunt feels like delaying the inevitable. You know she's going to be pissed at you when she realizes you tricked her, but you can't help wanting to show off more cool stuff while you can. Anything to see that wide-eyed appreciation for any tiny new thing. What's left of your spaceship comes into view as you round the bend. There really isn't that much left to show off, but Wanshi's still into it. She runs over and starts inspecting the rubble. You wonder what happened to the freshly missing parts. Maybe Vikar has come back to scavenge some more. Shit. Vikar. You haven't talked to that guy in forever. You vow to text him later tonight, but you still feel guilty. It's hard to juggle all these beautiful friends, even with how viscerally you crave them. You want to be good for everyone, but there are so many things that can be mean, or that can mean, and you've never stopped feeling like you're treading water. Once she emerges from the hull, clambering up on top of a black metal box and waving around some inscrutable rusty bullshit. Oh, there's so many little parts. This was how you got here? She observes you for a second or two, then nods her approval. That's pretty cool. Any old idiot can wreck a spaceship. Take someone with brains to break out of the brooding caverns. Well, when you put it that way, you're completely right. <laughs> she winks and pockets some of the pieces. You ready to keep moving? I don't want to miss a meetup, and it's happening right after Horse Aroni jousting. We should be ending pretty soon. You're not sure what to tell her. For some reason, Vicar won't leave your mind. Your sorry ass hasn't meant, managed to keep up with all the friends you did earn. Maybe it's for the best that you're deciding to take her home. Her safety is more important than her liking you. You sigh and start to fess up. That guy in front. You were afraid. Afraid to grow. Afraid she'd run off if you didn't stick with her. Afraid of not knowing what to do next. What? Maybe it means my one chance to do something fun for a change? Just because you're too much of a scaredy bird beast to go to a fun nerd party? It wasn't just that. You also wanted to keep her safe, to take her home. She stomps her foot in frustration, tears forming in the corners of her eyes. Why do you think you can just make decisions for other people? Why don't you go home if that's so great? Your mouth shuts. Words gone. She follows your gaze back to the wreck of your only shot out and winces. I didn't mean... I know you can't. I just want it... She sits down in the grass, defeated. You sit, too, a ginger distance away. No, her anger is fair. God, this sucks. You hadn't meant to deprive someone of a small joy here on this bitch of an Alternia. Yeah, it's the worst. She sighs and runs her claws along the tops of the spiny purple grass. After a few minutes of silence, she speaks. You like to do anything about it now. I'm still super angry with you. Well, I'm glad you were honest, I guess. Even if it took you too long. I'm not used to people being straight with me. I feel like the older everyone gets, the more they lie, or at least the more annoying it is that they don't expect you to notice when they lie. Now that I can super tell how old you are, your alien physiology is a little inscrutable, but you know, more or less. Your palm husk buzzes, interrupting your train of thought. You both look at your two new texts. You sure you still don't want to join? Things are beginning to get interesting over here. You may have the, the privilege of seeing me at peak performance if you come by. What? There's a collar bear on the loose. I want to on the already very long casualty. List. Yeah, I'm failing both those voices. It's okay. You do a quick gorgle and holy shit. Social media is already on fire with the news of a con attraction getting free and mangling attendees left and right. The familiar ghostly feeling of a near miss shivers down your back. Wow. 
Her eyebrows pulled together as she works through the images she's seeing on the screen and what it could have meant for her. She's still a little teary from before. I guess, thanks? Now that you did it on purpose. But I guess maybe it worked out okay. I do love not being trampled. But it still sucks I didn't get to make friends. You don't want to be too presumptuous, especially after all that, but maybe this day might still be salvageable, new acquaintance-wise. Once she blinks back her disappointment and puts on an attempt at a smile. Maybe. Might as well see. What was she going to do with her new friends? Maybe on your way back to the caverns, you guys could talk about soldier per beast, or scary horse jousting, or whatever else you wanted to do there? She stands up and crosses her arms, looking you over, her smile turning real. You think you got what it takes to roleplay? You stand up too. You're super cool with roleplay. You've basically been doing that since you landed. So what's the deal again, you ask, as you start walking her home? Magic cats? Magic? Where are you, some kind of wiggler? Well, there's no magic in soldier per beasts. She rolls her eyes at you and then hunches her shoulders, claws spread, eyes darting from bush to bush along the sidewalk ahead of you. Unless you mean power of your own wits, sorcery of all your senses lying at once, you get ready to pounce. The hypnotic spell like rhythm of your own push or beating in time with your praise. She straightens up and grins. That kind of stuff, huh? Anyway, it's really fun. Let's play. She's bounced back so fully, you get the feeling there's not many people indulge her in this. It reminds you of your younger self, and your heart crunches up a bit. Fuck yeah, let's play. You mean heck, heck yeah. Don't patronize me. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Once she giggles. Fuck yeah! Okay, the little lost you can be from the space cast. Let's call you Twinkle Paw. I'll be Wild Wiz from the Solar Glare Clan, huh? She clearly seems to think you would you should be impressed or intimidated by this, but you don't really know what's going on, so you're not. Twinkle Paw, got it. Well, you'll stumble upon me while I'm taking down a nut creature, carrying it away with your incompetence. Damn good. She peppers her walk with skips, talking up a veritable storm of world building. Her voice gets low and rumbly when she quits setting the scene and gets into character. Little one, what do you think you're doing setting Strip Paw in our territory? Maybe lose my creature feast. What do you have to say for yourself? Ah, oh, fuck. It's your turn. You, um... You didn't see where you were going. You're sorry, though. You know how hard it is to come by a good meal. Fool, you think you you think me so poor a tracker that I'm hurt by such a loss? I can find another. I find offense only in that you clearly do not respect the bond between hunter and hunt. You blunder in and interrupt the sacred rhythm of my fangs, its neck, or its claws, my face. Oh, the sacred rhythm of my fangs, its neck, or its claws, my face. Now neither of us can know who would have prevailed. Oh, jeez, you're still, like, really sorry about your strut paws. Constantly sticking those into other people's sacred dances. Maybe there are some more nut guys over there? Once she stops walking and gives you a withering look. That really the best you can do? No, you'll try again. Um... How dare this per beast accuse you of such a thing? Your intentions are as noble as the wild pusher that thumps in your, uh, bone cabinet. Wanchi bounces, hands and fists, grinning. Oh, Well, over the top, and not really a star cast approach, but you're getting there. You practice finding your soldier's characterization sweet spot as you walk her home. You take the most direct road, but you let her stop to explain per beast grooming habits, Breathe in the rotting perfume of a flower, and to appreciate yet another sidewalk raving worm. Eventually, you reach the cave entrance you know. And standing under its eave is Linra. A very pissed looking Linra, which isn't uh, your favorite mode for that particular friend. Where have you been? I said I'd be right back. Not Hagel run off and leave me to make excuses for you. I'm back now, so you can get over it. I know you won't tell. You don't want Bronya to know you lost track of me. Watch yourself. Linra glazes fireball. Linra glares fireballs at her, and then turns to you, softening the tiniest of bits. Thank you for bringing the short one back. You want to come in? Yeah, I don't remember the voice I had for her either. Ah, terrible friend. 
You appreciate her politeness, but nah, you should go and let the Jade settle down and everything. Plus, you have another friend you need to check up on. Before you can say anything to Wanshi about how you hope she ended up having an okay time, she scurries off around the corner, calling back over her shoulder. Wait, I have something I want to give you before you go. So you wait. Linra keeps looking at you, arms still crossed. Better be glad she's okay. If she got hurt, I could never... I mean, I would be in so much trouble. You don't have to call her on secretly caring, because once she comes running back with something in her hands, her hair bounding behind her. Here. Read this, and maybe when you come back to visit me, you'll be, um, a little more informed about the Soldier Purby's universe. Hmm. I only have one person to play with here, and he usually pretends he's too cool. Like, he didn't absolutely love Purby's cast drama. She bows a little as she offers the book to you. It is tattered with love. It's my personal copy, but I think I can trust you with it, Twinkle Paw. What do you say, hmm? You clutch it to your chest and tell her you will guard it with all the honor and Spitfire Starcast has to its hallowed name. Best book buddies. the brain room. This time I'll actually take her. Anything to get you both out of here. Grabbing her hand, you say you know the way and make a run for the door. She whoops and scurries down the stairs behind you. A quick glance back at the guard taking her hand off her mace reassures you that you moved fast enough. Once you're around the corner from the book hive, you stop and catch your breath. I stop now. Lead the way, alien friend. You wave her enthusiasm off. She's out of breath herself. You can hold her hoofbeats for a minute, while you locate your fucking bearings and think. You looked this con up earlier when Tengari and Polypa invited you. They had said it was fun, that the death toll was high enough to be interesting, low enough to be manageable, and that you'd be safe with them. Still, you chickened out. You guess changing your mind and going could be okay? You're definitely anxious about bringing Wanchi along, but it seems like she's hell-bent on attending anyway, so maybe the best thing you can do is be a responsible chaperone. Plus, none of your friends make you feel better protected than Polypa. Gorgo Map says it's not far. Well, you've dealt with plenty of dangerous clusterfucks before, so what's one more? You're a regular gal's quarry of bullshit scenarios. Pile those some bitches on. I don't know. You bow as you gesture down the sidewalk that will lead you toward the outskirts of town. Wanshi curtsies and follows your direction. It seems like she doesn't need you to come up with things to talk about. She's like a chatty sunflower, pulled toward the bright newness of everything she sees, and chock full of commentary about all of it. Wow, I've read all about Moonlight, duh, but seeing it make everything glow is totally different. Look at the dew on this pick or prickle frog. You get close and look, you can see the reflection of your own eye and the moon's. You do as she does, and damn if that ain't a bunch of orbs reflected back at you, floating on the curve of a purpley green meniscus. Her curiosity isn't overwhelming or draining in the slightest. You tell her it's kind of nice, actually, to meet someone else who is experiencing this place for the first time. Yeah, caverns are fine, but there's so much to see out here. Everyone else sneaks out. I don't know why it took me so long to try. No, actually, I do. Getting in trouble sucks, and I hate it. But it worked out. Here we are, experiencing it all together. Yeah, you can feel your anxiety lifting, just a little. Just the part that's applicable to this particular situation. Still, that's a win. Walking and talking and taking in the night makes time pass quickly. You ask her how she ended up in the book hive to begin with. I snuck out when Linra was supposed to be giving me some boring J-duty lesson. But we yelled. I don't have a palm husk, so I couldn't look up the con once I was away from my husk top. I just wandered until I gave up and found the book hive. That's a powerful nerd homing beacon she must have. Once she flexes. You know it. You smell what's around the corner before you see it. Having sidestepped your fair share of corpses in your travels, and had your hand in creating a few more, you know how to prepare yourself. Wanchi, on the other hand... 
You know the brooding caverns aren't some diaper baby summer camp of innocence, but you're also not sure how much viscera she may or may not have seen. No matter your respective levels of gore viewing experience, you both stop short when it comes into view. Oh. She takes a tender step towards what's left of the troll, and then retreats, hovering close to you. It feels like you should keep moving, like you should avert your eyes and carry on or whatever the fuck before the drones come by to clean up, but she's still staring. Her steps, when she finally takes them, are soft. She crouches down and leans in with reverent scrutiny. You look different, not in a jar. You wonder yourself, as one she shakily takes it all in, if bloodthirstiness is a trait only certain trolls are born with, or if they have it ground into them by necessity, by expectation, by entitlement, by fear. Next, because your brain is wired around itself, you wonder the same about humans. Once she doesn't look away for a while, you go over and put your hand on her shoulder, and she stands up and walks away with you. There's no ceremony to it, no placing of leaves over the remains, no prayer. I don't get... She doesn't finish her sentence. She takes your hand and pulls you back in the direction you were walking. She looks confused, like she's still trying to work out what she just saw. You guess you could have given her more time to process it, but you're not sure that comprehending death is really a thing that you can just, like, figure out in the wilderness with an alien in one night. After a few minutes of silence, you point out the call of some flat beast, and she mimics it. She mimics it and smiles. Soon after, the pointy top tents of the con rise over the horizon. Once she starts running, dragging you behind her. Just a little while ago we said we didn't know anything about birds, but now we have flat beasts. Oh shit, here we come! She's vibrating out of her skin. You're basically doing the same, though it's less an excitement thing, and more an emotional whiplash thing. Whatever, you can work with that. You attempt to dig into the new vibe as you walk up to the gates. There are vendors and artists and trolls all around. It's like some unholy combination of anime con and renaissance fair, but with more people walking around sporting recently inflicted limps. In an attempt not to focus on that, you look around for your other friends and ask her what she's excited to see and do here before her meetup starts. Does she want snacks? It's like they're snacks. Yeah, I could want some frazzled saccharin fluff candy in a bit. But yeah, there's a lot to do, huh? It's a collar bear riding, the cosplay comp the cosplay competition. The you cut her off. Doesn't she mean cosplay? There are trolls you think might be in cosplay, or maybe that's just like how some trolls dress. Yeah, that too, if you don't want to get your claws too bloody. Ah, oh, jeez. There's the old nerves coming back. You really hoped that bringing her here was okay. There are other young trolls roaming around, so you're probably good? You try not to think of the body you saw as an omen. There are bodies all over the place here on Alternia. You pull out your palm husk and consider your friends. You could message Palapa or Tangeri to see where they're at, but your thumb gravitates toward Bronya's gripe profile. Right when you decide you're being dumb and pocket your phone, a lot happens at once. Wanchi starts to pull you toward a dude in a utility kilt handing out flyers. A bell rending, a bell rending sound rends, well, your bowels. And then a massive armored bear with huge beefy biceps hurtles through the ground, hollering and grinding tents and congors alike into bent, splintered pulp. Wanchi stares, frozen, as the beast rampages towards you both. Oh no. She whimpers and looks at you, comprehension and fear etched into her features. You did this. You brought her here. You let this happen to her. She knows it. You picture a hundred outcomes. A million. You want to work toward the end, you see, where you save everyone who hasn't already gotten squished, are elected grand human, and no one ever gets fucking trampled again. There's no time for that one. Instead, you pick up Wanshi, give her a quick hug, and throw her into the closest bush. With what's left of your adrenaline-filled noodle arm strength, you reach for the handle of a katana from a vendor's rack, and hope to fuck it's not only for display. You've never felt less prepared to take something on in your life. You've never felt more sure you had to. In the end, it's no choice at all. The beast charges you, teeth bared and rainbow bloody. You hold your position, pinky and ring finger tight near the bottom of the handle, like Tegnuri taught you. When it leaps at you, tackling you to the ground, you bury the blade into its chest. 
The collar bear lays on top of you, the last of its life twitching out of it as it presses your life out of your lungs in return. Through your darkening vision and under the furry dead weight pinning her to the ground, you see her from the edge of the woods, eyes wide and watery with understanding when she picks herself up. Oh. Oof. All right. That is all the friends we have time for today. <sighs> Thank y'all for hanging out with me. Uh, we'll be back with more of this tomorrow. Y'all have a great day out there.